Hello, and welcome to Alzheimer's SOS. Today, we'd like to talk about a type of dementia that's extremely common, and yet many people have never heard of it. Oh, you must be talking about vascular dementia. How'd you guess? Oh, well, it's the second most common type of dementia after Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And you know, and many people actually have a combination. You know, that's what you call mixed dementia. Mixed dementia, that's right. Now, vascular dementia is caused by multiple very small strokes. We usually see it in people who are at high risk for stroke. The folks who have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or other cardiovascular disease, like they've had a heart attack or poor circulation, those are kind of the warning signs that they are at higher risk. You know, when I think of someone having a stroke, I think of paralysis, mm -hmm. you know, affecting a limb. Mm -hmm. And, you know, does that happen with what you're talking about here? Well, let me explain. The circulation to the brain looks exactly like a big oak tree. Now picture that tree with green leaves everywhere, but one area of the tree, the leaves are all brown. And you say, well, what happened? Well, something must be wrong with that branch. And that's what a big stroke is. You've got one branch of an artery that feeds one specific area of the brain. That artery gets plugged up. That part of the brain doesn't get any oxygen or any nutrition, and it's damaged or destroyed. Now, picture that oak tree again. Green leaves are everywhere. But here's a brown leaf, and here's a brown leaf, and here's a brown leaf. One over here, one over here, and you say, well, what happened? Well, a little twig must have been damaged, so that leaf died. Now, picture an area of the brain no bigger than the tip of this mm -hmm. pen, and its job was to pay a bill. For 50 years, when the bill came, this thing lit up, and it told you how to pay your bill. Then, overnight, this tiny artery that feeds this tiny area of the brain gets plugged up. This area of the brain that knew how to pay a bill gets damaged. So one week, the bills come, you pay them. The next week, you look at the bill and you go, well, how do I, well, what a, I, as if you never learned to pay a bill. So these patients have multiple strokes, mm -hmm. you know, and it robs them of their ability to function and do things that they're normally doing. Mm -hmm. You know, do they have problems with word finding mm -hmm. and then also making decisions? You know, what about depression? Yeah, vascular dementia, one of the first signs is problems finding the word. Mm -hmm. And we do see a lot of depression because sometimes the area of the brain that creates the chemicals that keep our mood up gets damaged by a stroke. Now, how do you find these, Dr. Schnee? Well, we order an MRI of the brain okay. is what we usually want to have. We're looking for the scars, the signs of these mini strokes. Okay, does the MRI report say multiple mini strokes, multiple small strokes? No, no, it's all in different terms. You know, when we talk about the brain, we call our brain our gray matter. But the deeper part of the brain is the white matter. That's the switchboard of the brain, and it transfers all the messages from one area of the brain to the other. So the p report will say there's changes in the white matter. Some of the terms will be periventricular white matter infarcts, since infarct is our word for stroke. Okay. So this is where you get on your soapbox. I am on the soapbox because many times people will have had a CAT scan or an MRI done in the emergency room, and then the patient and their family are told, oh, the study's negative, meaning there's no fractured skull, there's no brain tumor, there's no emergency diagnosis. Mm -hmm but they're not always told about the findings of hardening of the arteries and the little tiny subtle mini strokes. Okay. So that's why you always tell people to get a copy of their reports. That's right. You know, x-rays, MRIs, ultrasounds, and any heart tests they may have. Absolutely. You know, read the results yourself, look up the terms, and then ask your doctor, your nurse practitioner, your physician assistant, somebody to explain it to you. Okay. Now remind me, what's the difference between a TIA and a mini stroke? The T in TIA stands for transient, transient ischemic attack. Those are stroke symptoms that get better within 48 hours. It doesn't leave a scar. Mm -hmm. These mini strokes leave a scar. Okay. So most people ask the same question over and over about that diagnosis. 
they may say, don't you think that I would have known if I'd had a stroke? Mm -hmm. People have the same questions uh, each time we make this diagnosis. And will, would I have known I had a stroke? No, no, all you do is feel the losses. These are tiny, silent strokes. Can you tell exactly when a stroke happened when you look at the MRI? No, you can't because it's like looking at a scar. You can tell a fresh cut, okay. you can tell a healing cut, but after a month, you don't know if that scar is a year old or 10 years old. Okay. So can you tell how many strokes a person had when you look at an MRI? No, because it's like trying to count holes in Swiss cheese. They kind of run into each other, so you can't get an exact count. Now, you could compare previous MRIs and say, okay, it looks like there's a few five years ago and there's a whole lot now, but no exact numbers. You know what, you've started just about every question with no. Do you ever say yes? Yes, I have a yes. And that's when families say, what can I do? Or is there anything I can do to help prevent strokes, to help decrease the risk? Absolutely. You can do this by keeping the blood pressure under control, control the blood sugar, keep your cholesterol under control, either with diet or natural treatments or medication, and thin the blood if necessary with aspirin or some of the other anticoagulants, always under the recommendation of your doctor. You know, we make a, the same recommendation as far as a healthy diet, exercise, activity, mm -hmm. socialization, and we offer the same education with a lot of other diagnoses. That's right, because every diagnosis of dementia, it's the same, but each one is unique, it's different, but families need the same tools. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no specific drug for vascular dementia. We use the same medicines that we use in Alzheimer's disease, Aricept, Exelon, Razadine, and Nemenda. You know, so families need to be aware that there's different types of dementia, mm -hmm. and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. They need to understand how important it is to treat the other illnesses that mm -hmm. put you at risk for a stroke, and also understand that the, this will progress differently than any other type of dementia. And you know, I've heard you explain that so well to families, the difference between yeah. how Alzheimer's progresses versus vascular dementia. You know, and I'll say, you know, Alzheimer's is like a ball rolling down a hill. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be several years, where vascular dementia is like a ball rolling down a flight of stairs. It goes here, and then pops down here, it pops down here, and it's the strokes robbing someone of their memory. Mm -hmm. And that's why everybody deserves that accurate, good diagnosis, mm -hmm. a thorough workup, and then the education to know what they're dealing with. Um, the medical is part of it, but a caregiver specialist, a caregiver support group, just worth their weight in gold. So if you like us, let us know. Share this information with your family and friends who are dealing with Alzheimer's and other types of dementia. And thanks for watching. Our episode of Alzheimer's SOS, don't forget to like, to comment, and to subscribe. And to learn more or see other episodes, simply visit parishhealthcare.com slash Alzheimer's SOS. See you next time.